all right all right all right welcome back to the getting dirty off-road channel stop yapping dogs i don't know what her deal is uh, she wants to play with the other one the other one doesn't want to i don't know anywho we are demo car um now this one this one right here did not get a single hit here at the hometown local show and uh that's mostly because the fuel pump died and then later on in the night it well it was complicated so no hits kids back to school you know he was for that demo too but they're heavy into the school work he's he's got a lot to do up there so he's decided let's just junk it now before we haul it back to where he needs to take it for a commitment you know they basically they gave him the car he's got to take it back when he's done type of commitment we're gonna strip out everything that we need for the next one so what he wants me to do first and i'll tell you i don't know why i kept it here i'm just i don't know what i'm doing i should have sent it back with him so that he could strip gut cut take it back because it's got to go back over there where where he's at so what am i thinking you guys why did i keep it here for me to do i don't know i guess maybe because because i'm gonna record it and he's not that's probably why but back to it what he wants to do is he wants to keep this trunk lid and that's because a guy by the name of jason sauer who's uh let's how do i put this who's whose business maybe his business is most wanted fine art he tagged this trunk lid while we were out there in nebraska now it kind of bubbles over the sides and you know it bubbles over well you can't tell there but anyways i think you can still pretty well read coulter's mantra which is don't tap it smash it so he wants to keep that put it on the wall primarily because jason sauer did it most wanted fine art but it looks cool and he wants to keep it around so we're gonna hang it up so we're taking that off now up here on the front he also tagged a little bit but i think most of it comes over the fender and then it got to where i don't know it got fairly damaged over here so i don't know if we're gonna try to keep any of that section probably not but if we keep the trunk lid that'll be cool cool memories uh maybe we'll run into that jason again somewhere hopefully nebraska next year if we do we'll have some more tagged if not we'll hang on to that just to tell stories about it anyways then we're gonna pull this fuel tank out um I think what I may do before that is the kids, they swapped out the fuel pumps tonight of the demo, so that's probably got to get back to his buddy where it belongs, but I think I might just flip that switch over there after I unhook the fuel line from the carburetor, make it easy, and pump her out into a jug. Then we'll get that tank out of there, and then I'll unhook the battery and I'm gonna take that ignition switch out as well. So, those are kind of the top three at the moment, but we're gonna get this thing stripped out so that we can junk it out and be done with it. Move on to the next one. Okay, now, start with on this trunk lid, we've got some of this uh, number nine wire wrapped around things, so get that out of there. I kinda, I like to do it the easy way. They're just, there ain't no reason to fight it. I'd get the torch out here, which probably gonna need anyways, but it's buried back there and I'm gonna have to get it out. Anywho, there's one. 
Okay, got one over here on the side. Okay. There's two. Okay, now we're over on this side. Number three. Okay, one more wire. And it's kind of broke, but it still hooks up. Let's get that. Number four. Now, I thought I was maybe going to have to get the torch and chop the hinges off, but uh, looks like the skin's almost all the way off from there, so maybe we'll just do that. Okay, let's just see if we can peel this skin off. Need all that other crap. Really? We don't need this either, but it is a pretty cool wall piece. Alrighty, there it is. It's even got a little getting dirty off road down there on the bottom, so. I guess if this doesn't go anywhere, we can laugh about that one time I tried to make a video. But uh, yeah, I'll find somewhere to put that on the wall. He's going to be mad because he wants it on his wall. But, you know, he's renting, so too bad for him. All right, now we're going to take this fuel line off the carburetor so that we can pull it back and use it to pump the tank out save this clamp for the next time got to untape his wires from the hose so that we can pull it out of there oh i found his socket that's weird Come on out of there now. Oop, got gas everywhere. That's fine. Okay. Got it in the jug now. There's only one thing left to do. All right, I'm gonna get my fat gut through this window right here, flip that switch on and pump the tank out. Harder, not harder. Whatever that means. Now, we got some pretty grimy looking fuel in here, and if we all remember, we had some water in this tank too, so I'm sure that's my fault, you know, because I had a jug here from two years ago that I tried to mix in just to get rid of might not have worked out so well I ain't even gonna lie that looks bad kind of like a kind of like a cola one of them cola drinks yeah I'll burn it off in the blue bomber over there well I think that's it call it good I mean it's I don't know if you can see it, but it's definitely a cola. Um, we'll burn it. The old uh, throttle body engine will eat that right up. Okay, we're going to take this fuel line off from the tank now. And I'm going to have to remind that kid to put your clamps so you can get to them. There we go. Got to loosen up so I can turn it. So we're working on taking this fuel tank out of the car now. Um, 
going to take the fuel line off right here because the fittings that he's got on there started leaking so we're going to have to reseal all of that business but uh, get the fuel line out of the way first and so there's that alrighty we'll just take these bolts out now There's one, and two. It's getting dark on me. Must be about 6.30. And three, and four. So now I can lift that tank out of there and go throw it in the shop. Okay, so now we're gonna take that ignition switch out, throw it in the drawer in the uh, toolbox. Before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and unhook the battery because it might be a good idea. Well, wrong size. That's weird. Like I said, we're going to unhook this battery. Probably should unhook this the night of the demo, but I guess we like to live on the edge and see if they'll burn down afterwards. But anyways, that's done. Alrighty. Now we're going to pull this ignition switch out of the dash bar up here. Usually these nuts aren't too bad on those cheesy switches, but sometimes they get a little hard and difficult. Especially when you don't know what you're doing. Alrighty. That's out of there. Well, it's a wonder this switch was even working because... That screw isn't down tight. I don't know why, but that's how it is. Okay, finished taking this screw out since, uh, well, it's almost there anyways. Well, that was easy. But there goes those two wires, which I don't know. Maybe it was causing a problem with the uh, coil out yonder. Maybe it wasn't. Anywho, there's one. And now we'll get this other side. I think that camera just froze on you guys. Taking the first screw off from this. I'm sure you don't really care, but had to change batteries. And two. So now I'll go throw this into the drawer of the toolbox and maybe we'll use it again. And I think for tonight, I'm gonna call that good. Okay, so we wanna keep these wheels and tires, but I've got another car over there that the whole rear end has, I don't know, something's wrong with it. So I think what I'm gonna do is just drop the whole rear diff out of it and swap out with that other car before we junk it so i've already taken the two brake lines off the hoses um so we're just taking all the little stuff out of there and drop the whole thing out as one so now i've got the brake lines these little brackets hold it to the frame got both of those dropped down so now the brake lines are free okay so right up in here i'm gonna take that emergency brake cable and take it off from the wheel side, seeing how we don't need it. Had to find some more leverage. Okay, that one's off now. Take this other side off of here. Just like that. Now it looks like I've got a clamp or two holding this to the housing, so I'll get that off. Get this little guy off from there. Well, I don't know if you can see, but now I'm taking the wheel speed sensors out because we don't care. It's just garbage on the axle. So take this little bracket right here, which is holding that wire for the speed sensor. We don't need that mess. And we got another clippy doodad right there. I don't see anything on this side. I'll look over there on the other side real quick. Looks like it's just a like a spring clip type of thingy. 
Yep. So that's out of the way. And right up here on the top of the diff, it's just got a little bracket hootus that holds it. Okay. Now that side's out. We will take care of the other side now. Now we'll get this other side out of there. Well, it might have helped, but probably not. Okay. Now we got that part of it out. So I'll pick up the piece that flew right at your face. And then we'll take this little bracket off on this side. Alrighty. Get this one off now. Ah, just break the whole bracket off up there. That's fine. Okay, that's got that. So now I think probably onto the trailing arms. Okay, so right over here, this is where the trailing arm from the rear end connects to the frame of the car. And that's what holds us in there. So you can see if we can get that bolt out. Well, at least the knot off from it. Uh, probably have to take some weight off the car before I really drive the bolts out. All right, so we're over here on this side. I think my camera, you know, it's cool. Some say cold. But I kind of think this is getting a little ridiculous how often that thing freezes up. All righty. Going to try to get those nuts off the top of the shocks. Um, this side I may have to try to do it from underneath. The other side I can actually reach from the outside pretty good. It's not real convenient. I mean... How's a guy supposed to do this when there ain't no access hole or nothing? Not very easily, I guess. Okay. And it's like hunting season or something. There's a million cars driving by. Anywho, it only took a crescent wrench, a 916 wrench, and the big equalizer pry bar but i've at least got the not moving by golly i think i got it by golly i did which this shock is purely decorational as uh i pushed it all the way down and it stayed there but for demo car that's all you need so we'll do the other side Okay, let's get this other one out. See if I can work it out like I did the other side. And we're back with another battery. So this time I'm going to just reach in from the outside here. So there's a little buckle in the metal there that just works out. Okay, that one was a uh, whole lot smoother than the other side. And like the other side, that one shot even more so. Um, but like I said, that's all right for the demo cars. We're just using them, keep the coil springs in, and uh, well, that's really all we care about. So I think we'll move on to these bolts in the upper control arms back here and then then it'll be just well you know what we need to move on to this sway bar first okay so now we're gonna keep this sway bar as well so what i'm gonna do is take it off from the top side up here and uh just let it drop out as well and of course, it's going to turn all the way down through, so I'll have to go get another wrench. That's weird. And right now would be a good time for one of those ratchet wrenches. Uh, there might be one in the back of the truck, but I'm already under here, so... I'll just struggle bus it. Dirt in the eyes. Dirt in the eyes. That's always nice. 
I'm even wearing glasses for crying out loud. Why does everything have to be 10 miles freaking long? Oh my gosh. Jiminy Christmas. It's gonna be Christmas before I get this done. My hands are cramped up. Ooh, almost got a wrench in the face. That would have been awesome. Okay, now we've got that one. You guys already know, we're gonna do the other side now. Alrighty, same story over here. It's trying to turn all the way through. And it's 10 miles long. Finally. I think it's been seven or eight minutes for crying out loud. Finally. Alrighty, so that's swung down out of the way. Now I guess we'll move on to the uh, bolts in those upper control arm hootises, thingies, majiggers. Well, we'll see about getting this bolt out and it's getting to where I had to put some light on the subject. Apparently winter is back, forcing its way in. I'm not sure what, but I don't like it. That's tight and not a lot of room to work with. Oh yeah. Well, I think it's time for a pipe seeing so i don't know where oh yeah my breaker bar got broke still waiting on that guy to replace it so i'll get a pipe oh that's a little easier kind of equalize the competition here okay what do we got what do we got not quite yet come on now no not yet Okay. Oh, that's gonna be it. Okay. So there's that. Now, I think on these upper ones, I'll go ahead and take the bolt all the way out because we're still sitting on the springs. We still got the bolts in these lower ones. I think it'll be all right. This is my last will and testament. The kids get everything. Okay. I think we're threaded out of there. Okay. Let's try my power adder here. There it is. Alrighty. You already know what's next. The other side. Okay. This bolt up here should be the last thing holding it in there. I mean, with the exception of the fact that we left these in the bottom just for safety sake for a minute. But uh, anyways, we'll get this out of there. This one's a little more awkward than the other side. Jeez. Come on now. This bolt is going to come out better than the other side did, though. If I ever get to the end of the yellow brick road. Okay, there's that part of it. And that part. So, there's only three things left to do. One. Knock the bottom bolt out. Two on that side. Three is to lift it up and let it fall out of there. So how do we like that? Just kidding. Got driveline bolts I want to take out first. So we better do that. And one. Here we go. And another one. Okay. Last bolt. At some point through the night, it decided 
didn't want to be on those uh, blocks. Oh, that's fine. And the fourth one. Okay. Now we get this drive line off from there. Maybe I need the bigger bar. Boy. There ain't any room for it to want to come out of there. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of the transmission as well because we're going to keep the engine and transmission. Well, come on now. There we go. She had a heck of a suction in there. Alrighty, we'll throw this to the side and use it again. Okay, we've come to that point. I'm going to pick it up a little bit, take a little tension off from it, drop those bottom bolts out of those control arms, and then drop the rear end. It's been a couple days. We went out of town, hanging out with family, having fun, doing a concert, you know, weekend stuff. Um, so we're home again. Let's uh, continue. So right now I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna cut a chain link. Looks like the kid just wrapped a chain around the tail shaft to see if he could hold it in there, which is fine. But we're gonna pull the engine and tranny, so I'm gonna chop a chain link unwrap that and there you have it that was the only thing holding her there so and that's just you know yeah it works um so i i think i will take the bolts out of this cross member too just so as i pull her up out of the car i don't i don't snag it back here somewhere and break this cone on the tail shaft that output shaft cone, whatever, housing, I don't know. Anyways, there ain't no sense in breaking it. It still works. Okay, get these cross member bolts out. There's one of them. Okay, now that we got the cross member undone, I'm going to take our all thread shifter out of there so we can keep it around too. There's one nut. And again. Okay, nut number two and this little cheesy quick and easy shifter has been removed we can use it again okay so now we're going to start on the motor mounts the other side is welded solid this side has a bolt in it so i'll take the bolt out of this side and then when i get ready i'll hook it up and put a little tension on it cut the other side okay that bolts out Okay, right now we're going to take this uh, cable, goes from the solenoid to the starter. We'll take it off the solenoid and just keep it on the engine there. So that's laid up over the exhaust manifold and out of the way. So now we've got this uh, ground cable, goes to the back of the cylinder head. We'll take it off the battery here. Got that one wrapped up over the manifold, so it's out of the way now. Okay, now he's got a couple of ignition wires go up to the coil. I don't really know why he's running two, but he has two of them. So this one's already unhooked because we took the switch out. And then this one here, looks like he's got it on the ignition side of the coil, which he really didn't have to. I mean, he hadn't done it before, so he figured out how to make it work. But as long as your power straight across the switch to the coil, your power to the coil, you don't need a wire on the solenoid to hold power on the coil. But either way, he was doubled up and ready for it. So we'll take this one off. That's definitely a redneck college kid in the trailer park front of the house. Just wrap the wire around the post. It's okay. It worked. So now we've got that out. 
Okay, pulled those up there, wrapped them around the coil. We'll save them for later. Okay, so now we're gonna take off this hand throttle wire that we fashioned, which we just had that twisted around the post there on the carburetor. That's all it is. Okay, now we'll take that throttle cable off. So we just had a screw through the end of the cable through the bracket tree there and nut on the back side. Pretty simple deal. All righty, that's out. All righty, we want to keep that throttle cable, so take the bracket off back here. Okay, that's disconnected now. And then we got a couple of nuts back here on the firewall that hold the cable in there. Okay, there's one nut. Okay, there's the second one. So now I just need to unclip it from the uh, throttle pedal in there. So this just has a groove and a plastic deal. The plastic goes in the hole, the cable drops down through the groove. So you pop the plastic hootus out of the hole there, pull the cable up through the groove, and now you're disconnected. And now it's free from the car, but this plastic hootus goes in that pedal and that's what holds it in there. Okay, so now we'll take this uh, line to the uh, brake booster, we'll, the vacuum booster, we'll pop that out of there because we need it. So that's off, we'll just tuck it over here on the manifold and it's out of the way. So now, now we'll take the hood off out of the way so is that we can hook it up with a chain, put a little tension on it, and cut this mount off from this side. So we'll start out by cutting these wires that are holding the front of the hood. There's one spot. There's the second spot. We'll just throw this junk back in the car to take it back. There's the third spot. Well, I got hungry and it got dark. So here we are. There's the fourth one. Oh, I need to keep that big washer. Yeah. Somebody ran it through the fence down the road over there. Bent the exhaust pipe back. Now it's in the way. That's okay. We'll manage. Alrighty. Let's get this hood off of there. Maybe. One bolt. I don't know what he used to put those in there, but they were tight. Good and tight. Bolt number two. Bolt number three. Oh yeah, and I dropped a wrench. There it is. Alrighty, here's the last one. Bolt number four. Okay, that's out of the way. Well, now we'll get a chain hooked up to this thing so we can pick it up. Alrighty, got a bolt the back corner of the intake manifold. We'll do one over here on the front corner and then just pick it up. Alrighty. Now we need one right up here. Okay, second one done. Now we can lift up on it. Okay, we're going to hook that skid steer up to that chain and put a little pressure on it now. Alrighty, now we can do a little cut on this side and she should swing herself out of there. Alrighty, let's start cutting. Alrighty, she's loose. He only had a, he only had a few spots that he could weld on there, so somebody's calling. Okay, like I was saying. He only had a few spots where he could weld his material to the cross member. So basically I just sliced through his welding and she's free. So we can lift now. Alrighty. Now, this radiator was still working well enough that we don't need to swing the engine through it. So let's go ahead and take that out of there before we get to lift and tie wire everywhere. There's one cut. And a second cut. 
And now that's out, out of the way. Ouchia. So I think I'll probably take that air conditioning condenser out. They make a pretty good protector in front of the radiators, you know. There, Some of them guys got those tricks, and well, we have one, so we might as well use it. Well, that was easy enough. The clips that hold it in there were bent enough to just pop it right out. We'll use it again. So now, now I think we can lift her up and bring her forward and up and get it over and out. That's all there is to it and it's time let's do it there you have it other than evidently the starter did not want to be attached to the engine again so i don't know what's going on there but we'll figure it out cobble it together run it again okay now since we're junking this one and the one across the yard has issues for some reason with uh uh wheel studs, so lug studs. I'm going to go ahead and swap out rotors from this one to that one, seeing as how this is just going back to the crusher. We might as well keep what's working. So that's what we're doing now. There's number two. There's number three. Now i got to find a jack to, to get her up before I can take off number four. This one only has four. The other studs kind of messed up. So four is better than one or two like the other car has. So we'll use it. So I've got this 90s Chevy Jack. It'll work. Okay, that's good enough. All right, I had to give up last night. It got on to, I don't know, 1 a.m. Working nights this week, so that's okay, but I gave up. So here we are, back at it. There's number four. So now we'll make our way inside of there. Alrighty, let's get that tire off from there. Done. Alrighty. Now we're gonna press that piston back into the caliper so that we can take the caliper off to get to the rotor. And that'll do. Alrighty, we'll start taking this caliper off now. There's one. There's two. Now we can slide that caliper off from there. Alrighty. So now that we've unbolted this caliper, we can just pull it up off from there. Brake shoes or brake pads come off with it. And that's over there, out of the way. So now we can move on to pulling this rotor off and then taking this hub and everything out of there for what we're trying to do. Alrighty, let's slide this rotor off. It comes away separate from the hub itself. So we'll toss that to the side. And then we just have this hub piece left, which is really primarily that's what we're after. So. Better find some more tools. Alrighty, so for this, I'm gonna get this dust cap here off, which sometimes takes a little tapper. At least for me it does. But sometimes it works. This one's like a plastic of some sorts. 
So that's kind of weird. Not super impressive. There we go. Now we got the edge. And there it is. So now it says right on this cap, do not remove, do not adjust, permanently lubed. I don't know. I want to get it off from there though, so I got to do it. Alrighty, pretty straightforward here, just like any of the others. Got a nut here on the outside of it, which this one might be a cover. I don't know, it's kind of strange. So I tried to find something before I just destroyed it. I couldn't really find anything, so let's destroy it. Pretty sure this nut looking Buddhist here is just a cover over top of the nut, like a safety lock deal. So we're gonna just try to tap it until something happens. I don't really know, kids. Let me see if I got a socket. Okay, so it looks like it's a 35 millimeter. So we'll see what happens here. Well, it looks like the whole thing's gonna turn. Okay, so that's what it is. Now I was thinking about peeling these off and actually popped one up and looked like there's three different nuts inside of there, but I don't know. It's all one thing, so there it is right there. That's out of there. Okay, so now we got the nut off from there. It's all a sealed unit. So it just slides right off from the spindle. And you can see there's a seal here, but everything's greased internally. So there's no packing grease, no roller bearings. I mean, it's a roller, but sealed unit. So that's it. That's all there is to it right there. So I'll go stick this one in the shop for the other car. And then uh, in order to take this back to the scrapper, we'll put the messed up one on here, junk it out. Alrighty, so we'll move over to this passenger side and copy the driver side, just do the same thing. Well, now I'm over here getting the bad stuff off from this one to put back in the other one to haul to the junkyard. But you can see we're missing studs and this rear end's not very good at rolling. It kind of does when it wants to. And I'm sure that we can mess with it and get it to go, but you know what? We have a good one over there. So let's get rid of this one. Okay, now we're back over here to the other car. You know, the junk that we're going to send to the junkyard. So, start getting that done. Well, I've gone and dumped the rear end out. So now we're in the ground. So now i got another one of these... 90s scissor jacks so we're gonna have to lift it up so I can get these junk parts off of here
Alrighty, I've got that junk one back underneath of this guy, so let's see if we can get at least a couple of bolts back up in here somewhere and get it back to the junkyard. Almost like I almost thought about what to do here. It's crazy. First time actually, so get lucky on this one and fight the other one, I'm sure. I'm sure. I think maybe it'll thread in there. Probably not. Maybe I need to go from the tapper to the smasher. Maybe just hit the bolt, that might help. Got a phone call. All right, let's uh, give it a try on the medium sized tap it, tapper. Whew. Just not quite lined up correctly okay all right I'm gonna have to get under there with you guys let me go you know what let me straighten up on the other side just a skosh and then we'll put a beating on it all right I'm gonna have to lift the car back up just a skosh now I told you this one was going to line right up, the other side was going to fight me. I had to get the whole housing to move over, and the car was sitting on it, so we might get it. Alrighty, folks. The struggle was real. Real. Now, hopefully, anyways. Maybe. Okay. Probably not. Here we go. So now we're, we're sort of lined up. Good enough. Ouch. Well, I'll tell you what. That nut's going to have to wait. We're going to have to pick it back up. Not today. Okay, now we're back over here again, and we are getting this junk rear end stuffed in there. I think I probably told you that. So, got her swinging on the redneck lift so that I can get these sway bar bolts, hooter, thinger, majiggers put back into place so that we can roll it on and off the trailer to get rid of it. You guys probably gonna have to move up here. I don't know. It's probably complicated, but hmm, maybe. Well, sure. Jeez. I'm trying to get this out of my way, you know. Should have been done ages ago. Well, Maybe not. Well, come on. You piece of junk. Okay. Got that one in. Finally. Had to go and get the other jack and reposition more under the center so that uh, we can get both sides up. That other one's trying to squish. It doesn't help when I live on a hillside and everything's running down to the road. Well, that don't help neither. So let's go back to the first jack and we'll try it back here under the frame behind the tire. There we go. Now we can get that one off.
Well, it got dark on me. That's how she goes when you're doing I don't know how many things at one time, so I think that hurt a little bit. I think I'm gonna probably go find some dinner and call her a day. That couch is calling me, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Oh, we got a couple more things we can do. Nope, I don't know. Maybe. Let's go look at the other car. Okay, up under here, I mean, you see I got the death support going on that rear axle. I had to get it lifted up, you know. But uh, anyways, sure seems like a lot of work up underneath of here. Just, uh, just to go back to the junkyard. But I need to be able to maneuver this thing on the trailer and whatnot. So, what I've done is went ahead and put everything back. Now that's wedged. That's weird. But I put everything back so that I can actually move it around on and off the trailer to get rid of it. It's just going to go in the crusher. We all know that. But, but whatever makes it easier for me to get rid of it is what we'll do. So now everything is back in place. I'll just need to, I will tighten up a little bit on some of the bolts, but then the rear end is back in it. Okay, we're still putting hubs on the front. Um, down to where I think it's just tighten up a couple of bolts so that stays in place long enough to get rid of it. Junk, you know. So I think what I'll do now is start moving on um inside of here we've got this tray where we have the gas tank and then these pipes down to it we're gonna go ahead and cut those off keep this whole piece and then uh after that He wants to keep our halo bar. We'll have to put a new sticker on it next year, I'm sure, but we want to keep that. For sure the square tubing portion of it. But I think I might come down inside of here and just cut the floor out and then lift the whole thing off with the skid steer. So we'll be working on that. Oh, and right up there we need to get that starter solenoid get that out of there so we can hang on to that we might need it again so yeah right now we're kind of down to where it's just about ready to get it on the trailer and get it out of here drag the cutting torch out now get happy with it keep tightening up bolts underneath of there until I'm ready to shove it on the trailer okay there's one cut on this little side support thing that should uh have us removed from the halo bar support next day back at it Well, I'd say that's cut number two completed. Seeing how she just fell. Switch sides here now. Alrighty, third cut done. That wheel bearing feels like it's shot. Good thing it's going to the dump, junkyard. Almost. There we go. Fourth and final cut. It's out. Okay, so there's the welds cut out of this pipe for the halo bar. So now we're separated from the seat bar. 
So that's one cut. Might need a beater for this. Oh, just kidding. We got it. Okay. Back up underneath the car here for a minute. I'm going to go through and get these bolts tight that are holding the swing arms, whatever you want to call them. That way, uh, when we're trying to load it up and get rid of it, it doesn't fall out on us. So, tighten them up just a little bit. Now I got it to bite. So, beating them in and out with the hammer. You know, I never beat them on the threads directly, but they still got caught and put a little mark on there. So it was, took a minute to get it, but I got it now. All right, looks like it's tight. Good enough. I'll get this other side tightened up. Well, come on now. There she goes. Shut my light off with my wrench. Pretty clever. Alrighty, she's tight. Had to find a wrench for this one. It's only a three quarter. And that's the last of the garbage knots. Okay, here's our fresh refurbished, stolen from the other car pad. So we'll stick that in, just like that. Alrighty, I gave up last night. It was pushing on midnight, and I really didn't get anything done, but I gave up. So here we are again the next day. Put this uh, outer pad on now. Well, it ain't going to go that way. Okay, so there's that. Well, we better lift this thing back up so I can get a tire on there. Well... We'll do that after I put a charger on the skid stir. Alrighty, I got it started. Therefore, I got it lifted. Now we can swing this tire back up. Now this is an original tire that came with this car. The junkie already got it from, wants them back. So he held on to them until we take the car back. They'll get the wheels and the car. Happy, happy. Okay. Now, truth be told, I do have another one of these rear ends laying on the trailer over there. Which came out of his cob car, because that one's got a truck differential in it. So, anyways, I had a couple of the right size nuts on it. So there's one. And, I'll just set the caliper back on. Like that. Throw the bolts in there, which will center it up, and be good to go. Alrighty, I'm even stealing the bolts out of that other car. I don't know why. They're the same. But anywho, stick this one in there. Maybe. Oh yeah. It's got to go in there just a little bit before it hits the threads. Okay, there's one. Alrighty, here's the second one. That's all I'm going to put on it to take it back to them. And there you have that. Alrighty, I'll put this side on now. This side only has two studs, which is part of why I'm junking it out. And it should hold it well enough to move it around and get rid of it. Alrighty, stick this second bolt in there now. Tighten those babies up. Now the bolt, here's this one. This portion of it goes through the brake pad itself, and that's what lines it all up. So, got to make sure that we get her lined up. And then, of course, good and tight. Alrighty, we'll uh, stick a tire back on it now. Just like that. Alrighty, we'll get one of these nuts going on there. Oh, my skid jack is going down on me, so I better lift that back up so that... Make sure that gets on there all the way. Okay, so here's the second nut, which may or may not be the right size. It should be, but maybe this stud has got issues. Maybe I'll just drive it home and move on. 
I think that'll work. Yeah, it's gonna have to. Good enough to get it back. There's the first knot. Number two. Okay, there's a piece of tie wire to hold the doors. Also wrapped around that pipe that goes up to the halo. So we need to cut that tie wire and get it out of our way. Okay, so there's that. Might as well pull it through, I guess. There it is. Alrighty, now we're gonna cut this base. We're just gonna cut, basically, cut the floor out where we welded it in there. And we can just lift the whole thing up. Battery swap, try again. I think I'm pretty much out of oxygen. This might not work. Have to cut fast, I guess. I think that'll do it. Yeah, that's loose. It's tight because of this door, but it's loose from the car. There's a number three. There's a number four knot. All right, now, before I take the torch to the, this bar to get it out of the car on this side of the halo, I'm gonna go ahead and take our seat belt off where we bolted it to the bottom of this. That way we're not blasting it with all this slag and ruining a perfectly good and new belt. Okay, we've got that out of the way now. Alrighty, let's cut. Alright, I got through it. There was such a massive amount of weld on the top of that as I blew it out. It just kept sticking, basically welding back together. There's number five. Wrong way. Good enough, I'd say. Okay, we're done with this corner so we can let this jack down and get it out of there. All right. Make our last cut there on the floor and then we can get that halo bar out of there. There we go. We had a heck of a chunk of something on the inside of it. We got it. So now we can get it out of here. fails get a bigger bar apply more pressure just ram the hydraulics all righty next step for junking this thing out is uh we want to keep this starter solenoid down here use it again probably um so we're going to get that out of there First thing that we need to do to do that is take this ignition wire off from it just because it's easier to manage that way. Alrighty, so we've got that ignition wire undone from it. So that stuff is kind of out of our way now. So our next phase will be this uh, battery cable. And I think what I want to do is probably just keep it with the solenoid so we'll get this uh, Hot wire to the switch is taken off from the clamp portion of it. Alrighty. Kind of wedged in there, but it was loosened up to get it off the battery. It's it's quite a bit of a mess, but uh, there she is, disconnected. Get over there. So now all we've got left on the solenoid is just the main battery cable, and we're just going to leave it on that for now. We'll go ahead and get that solenoid out of there. Alrighty, let's get that out of there then. Oops. Well, sure. Where did it go?
go. Uh, down there. Alrighty, we'll just stick our nut and bolt back in there. And we've got it for the next go round. And there it is. This one might be stuck. Enough. I just took my hammer back. All right, better go get a smasher. <laughs> well, there's those roller bearings I was talking about inside. Now, if you look over there, you can see they separated. You can, if you want to, change just the wheel bearing portion, but these days, it's about the same price and just as easy to just buy the whole hub. So it's probably a good thing that uh, we're sending these ones to the junkyard and keeping the others. There, just like new. We didn't even see that. Okay, so now we will put these junk hubs on so that we can get some tires on it to get rid of it. All right, I figured might as well get it up here in my right in my eyes you know where I can see what's going on over here old junk brake pad junk rotor junk brake pads not that these were any better but we'll keep what was on here and junk this good enough absolutely not the right way to do that Somewhere along the way, this caliper got ripped off from the hose, so, you know, that's how she goes. So we will go ahead and throw it back on there. I ain't got no use for it, so I can go back to the junkyard. Well, it looks like we're done with this car for now, so... Got the front hubs, both sides taken care of. We'll go ahead and drop this one out of the feature film here and come back to it when we are ready work on it again. Rear end, body, engine, I don't know what, but we'll come back to it. Well, shoot. That one clears the ball joint problem we had for the last demo. We should have just run one of those wheels. Okay. So now we've got all the wheels and tires swapped so we can roll it now. That's good. I think we'll move on to... That steering shaft, we're going to pull that steering shaft out from the gearbox up to the steering wheel. Alrighty, so we're going to start taking the steering shaft out. So we're going to, I'm going to cut these welds he put on here, my kid put on here for the hoop he made to hold the steering shaft. So we'll just cut those right off the dash bar and just keep the whole thing. Alrighty, let's cut this other side. And there you have it. Alrighty, now we're going to cut our piece off from the uh, firewall down there that we're holding our shaft with. There we go. Good enough. Alrighty now. We are going to take this shaft from the gearbox so that we can keep it. You guys already need that though. Oh boy, I got that tight. Oh! Boy, that was tight all the way through. It wasn't like that when I put it on. I don't know what happened. Pry bar. There we go. Now let's see if we can get it out through that little hole there. Nope, not quite. That's okay. We'll just liquid wrench it. Alright, now this <clears throat> steering shaft here, I could take this U-joint off from the lower portion of it, separate it, get it out of there. But the torch is sitting right here, we'll just make the hole bigger, and then I can keep it all together. But when we put it in the next car, we'll have to take it apart so we can get it through there. And I think that'll do. Okay, now that we made room, we'll get the steering shaft out. Alrighty, now it's time. Uh, we're going to keep this starter button, so we'll get that out of here. This will go up there in the toolbox drawer along with that other one, so we can reuse it again. 
simple as that it's out of there we'll just leave the wires on it for now okay so it's looking like he wants to keep this dash bar so before I start blowing all this hot iron down through here onto the floor I need to get this battery out so we can keep it around too of course I didn't bring a wrench with me One that was laying in the dirt out here is just barely the wrong size. Did I do it? Oh, just barely. All right, there's one of them. Okay. Come over here to the other side of this bracket tree and get this one off. All righty, we got that one off now. Alrighty, let's take this other one out now. Okay. And another one. Well, now comes the fun part. Getting this heavy son of a gun out of there. thing is just kind of awkward it's probably why nobody uses those big ones anymore um, Atlanta alrighty we want to keep this dash bar now so I got to start chopping that out so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut me a little access here out of this top of the firewall the windshield lip here and that'll be that Okay, so now this door bar here is just got to weld on each side up on the top, so knock this one on the inside out of there. I think I'm running out of gases. That'll do for the inside of it there for now. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take this weld off from the top of this door bar on this side now. I should do that. Alrighty, so got a plate on the end of this dash bar pipe over here into the body. I'm just going to take that weld out of the end of it there. I think most of it's melted out of there now. Well, now i got to come inside so I can get the bottom weld blown out of there. I don't know. Let's see. Looks like it's loose. We'll have to get that other side out now. Alrighty. Just like that other side. I'm going to come right here got a little access point so that we can get this dash bar out of there okay now we're gonna cut this door bar off from this dash bar alrighty got that one loose alrighty it's time to get this dash bar all the way out of there now if you didn't notice it's winter okay we've got her cut loose now I should probably get a bigger hammer eh? That one will do just fine. Maybe just a little pry bar. Well, there you go. Alrighty. I guess we'll cut this door bar off from there now so we can keep it around. Well, what happened here? We run out of juice. No. Not quite yet. Froze over. Yeah, throws it up. Stupid winner. I hate it. There we go. Okay. Disconnected. So now I'm going to chop this seat bar off from this pillar here. Alrighty. We've got her disconnected on this side. Alrighty. I'm going to cut this seat bar out of this pillar over here. And then we'll see what happens. Okay, I've got it cut off from there now. I need to get it moved a little bit so I can get that door bar off. Alrighty, we'll get this uh, driver's door bar out of here now. Keep that. Um, I'm gonna keep the seat belt. 
So I had already taken this one off because it was connected to the halo bar. So this is half of the operation right here. Okay, what do we need right here? Something sort of big. Let's see. Too big and too small. Perfect. There we go. So now we got this half out. We'll keep that with the other half and then we can have a hole. Alrighty. We're gonna take this brake line back off from here that we put on to run it. So keep it around. Okay, so there's that end of it. Alrighty, so there's that. We can throw it back in the other car again. Alright. going to pull this fuel pump. We'll take this fuel pump out of there. Um, pretty sure it quit working, but we'll pull it out of here anyways and mess around with it in the shop. Might be able to use it for a sludge pump, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll mess with it later on, but we'll get it out of here. And of course, this one bolt over here is going to turn on us. Isn't that weird? Alrighty, got those, so now we got that out. Alright, that's out. Alrighty. Let's see. Get this bolt out of there, maybe. Okay. Hang on to that bolt with the other one. And I guess we'll go throw this in the corner somewhere and I don't know hook it up again and figure out why it doesn't work. Weird. Alrighty. We're going to go ahead and take this whole master cylinder reservoir situation out of there because we need it for another car. And somewhere in this snow is my chimney locks. Dang it. Well, I thought they were. Huh. Huh. My favorite thing setting something down can't remember where it's at and then it snows that's that makes it even better well here's the piece i was holding on to with them while it was smoking hot so maybe i took them in for another project what else have i been doing i can't even remember hey now here I found them. They're just they're right here. So there's that. Let's see if I managed to bring the right wrench. I'll be. That one fits. I don't think we need the booster, but I'm sure that we need the master cylinder. So we got that one there and one more over here. So there's that one. This just slides off. And there we have it. Alrighty, now we'll get the bottom of this battery box out of here. Alrighty, we've got one of them out of there now. Alrighty, we're gonna get the uh, bottom of this battery box out of here. We'll keep that around. That's just handy. It. It's a struggle sometimes by yourself, but that's how she goes. Ah, I got it! Finally. Well, back over here at this one for one more thing. We are going to... Oh, that broke right off. We're going to uh, swap out the master cylinder. This one's a mess. It's all, it's all who knows what it is, but we're gonna send this one back to the junkyard and keep that other one. So there's one nut off. Looks like maybe that's all it had. 
muddy and then we have a little washer on this side but like I said nothing on the other side I don't know where that went but uh, better hang on to these so I don't lose them in the winter okay we're just about ready to get this thing on the trailer of course we waited till winter there's just a few little minor things so somewhere in this seat I don't know how deep Oh, it's from uh, fingertip to wrist. But anyway, there's a steering wheel here that we probably should keep. Alrighty, so we got that now. Okay, since we're junking it and this uh, master cylinder is bad, it's all from the other car. We're just going to go ahead and throw it back in this one and get rid of it. Something like that. Okay, so from the other car, we've got this one washer that went over here on this side, like that. And then we'll stick the nut back on there. Okay, that's back in there, off to the scrapyard. Alrighty. We've decided we're going to junk the hood, so we'll get that back on there. Something like that, I guess. Easier to haul that way. All right, we might as well bolt it down. One less strap I gotta use later. All righty, so we've got this side bolted down. At least it won't fly off from the back way anyhow. Well, might as well do this other side too, I guess. All righty, this side's tight. Alrighty, we've come to that point in the video where we're actually going to end the video. I know it probably don't seem like it. I know it was a long one and probably painful for you. Um, but, you know, it's just what I've been doing. So, that's how she goes. If, well, it's not even a matter of if. I'm, I'm sure there's absolutely nobody watching any longer. I know it's a long one. If you're actually seeing this, I dang sure do appreciate it. Um, we're going to get this thing loaded up, get it junked out. Now, we did have a thought. The old cop car demo car over there, she got the front frame rails. Everything in front of the A-arms is just... It's all folded up. It's a mess. We actually started thinking a little bit. I'll give that credit to the kid, but I'm going to call the promoter at the show we want to take that cop car to, and if he'll let us, I think we might chop these frame rails off right in front of those A-arms, weld them back in. It's not going to make the other car any stronger, any better than it was. It's just going to well, it's going to straighten them out, so all, all, that's all it is. From the A-arms back, it'll all be the same, but if we're allowed to do that, you'll see it in a different video, or this one's drug on long enough. Just, it's over. Quit it already. Appreciate you watching. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. I don't know. I do appreciate it, though, so I'll catch you next time. All right, here's the thing. I've already tried to say thanks for watching and goodbye. This camera, I don't know. It is cold. I mean, I will give it credit that it is cold out, but it's Wyoming. It's always cold. Stop freezing up. Anyways, we're done with this one. If you see this car again, it's because we're chopping the frame rails for another car, but that'll be a different video. Otherwise, this is getting loaded up, and it's getting out of here. So, I know I'm probably talking to myself here since the video is so long, but I do appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like, subscribe, share it, tell your friends, tell your enemies. I don't know. Whatever. I'll catch you guys next time.